Hello, and welcome to the third episode of the Software Carpentry Lecture on the Unix Shell. In this episode, we'll see how to create, rename, copy, and delete files and directories. As we've seen in previous episodes, one way to interact with a computer is through a command line shell. When we type in commands like these, the shell finds the corresponding programs, runs them on our behalf, and shows us their output. But how do we create files and directories for it to show us? Let's go back to Vlad's home directory, Users Vlad. As in the previous episode, ls-f shows us the files and directories it contains, with a trailing slash after each directory to help us tell them apart. Let's create a new directory called temp with the command mcdir temp. As you might guess from its name, mcdir means make directory. Since temp is a relative path without a leading slash, the new directory is made below the current one. Let's run ls again. There's our directory. Graphically, we started with this directory tree and created the new directory here. However, there's nothing below it yet. Temp is empty. All right, we're in users Vlad and temp is empty, which we can tell because ls doesn't print any output. If we use ls-a to show directories whose names begin with dot, though, we see that dot and dot dot are there as they always are. The first name, dot refers to the directory itself, i.e. users vlad temp. The second, dot dot, refers to its parent, which just happens to be the current working directory users vlad. Let's change our working directory to temp using cd, then run the command nano junk. Nano is a very simple text editor that only a programmer could really love. And we really do mean text. It can only work with plain character data, not tables, images, or any other human-friendly media. This is what Nano looks like when it runs. The cursor is the blinking square in the upper left. It shows us where what we type will be inserted. Let's type in a short quotation, then use Control o to write our data to disk. By convention, Unix uses the caret, followed by a letter, to mean Control plus that letter. Once our quotation is saved, we can use Control x to quit the editor and return to the shell. Nano doesn't leave any output on the screen after it exits, but ls now shows us that we have created a file called junk. Running ls with the dash s flag shows us how large things are. Unfortunately, by default Unix reports sizes in disk blocks, which probably isn't the least helpful option imaginable. If we add the dash h flag, ls uses more human-friendly units for its output. Here, 512 is the number of bytes the file takes up. This is more than we actually typed in because the computer round sizes up. The smallest unit of storage on the disk is typically a block of 512 bytes. Let's tidy up by running rmjunk. rm stands for remove. This command deletes files. It's important to remember that there is no undelete. Unix doesn't move things to a trash bin. It unhooks them from the file system so that their storage space on disk can be recycled. Tools for finding and recovering deleted files do exist, but there's no guarantee they'll work in any particular situation, since the computer may reclaim the file's disk space right away. If we now run ls, its output is empty once again, which tells us that our file is gone. Let's recreate that file, and then move up one directory to users Vlad using cd dot dot. If we try to remove the temp directory using rmtemp, we get an error message. RM only works on files, not directories. The right command is rmdir, which stands for remove directory. It doesn't work yet either, though, because the directory we're trying to remove isn't empty. This little safety feature can save you a lot of grief, particularly if you are a bad typist. If we want to get rid of temp, we must first delete the file junk. The directory is now empty, so rmdir deletes it. Let's create that directory and file one more time. Junk isn't a particularly informative name, so let's change the file's name using mv. mv is short for move. We use it to move a file from one place to another. It also works on directories. There is no separate mvdir command. The first argument tells mv what we're moving. The second tells it where the thing we're moving is to go. In this case, we're moving temp junk to temp quotes.txt which has the same effect as renaming the file. Sure enough, ls shows us that temp now contains one file called quotes.txt. 
Let's bring that file into the current working directory. Again, we use MV, but this time the second argument is a directory. The effect is to move the file from the directory it was in to a different directory. And sure enough, ls shows us that temp is now empty, but we now have quotes.txt in our current directory. And notice, by the way, that ls with a file name or directory name as an argument lists only that file or directory. The cp command works very much like mv, except it copies a file instead of moving it. We can check that it did the right thing using ls with two paths as arguments. Like many other Unix command, ls can process up to thousands of paths at once. To prove that we made a copy, let's delete the quotes.txt file in the current directory and then run ls again. This time, ls tells us that it can't find quotes.txt in the current directory, but it does find the copy in temp, which we didn't delete. Let's make one more copy. This time, though, we don't specify the destination file name, just a directory, so the copy will keep the original's file name. To summarize, here are the commands we've seen so far, along with the two special directory names. In the next episode, we'll see how to operate on text files using pipes and filters.